Welcome back to the boat shop once again, everybody. My name is Joe Buskins. You guys probably been watching the channel a little bit, so you might know who I am, but for those of you that are new to the channel, I am a U.S. Coast Guard licensed second generation professional boat builder, and I hold a 100 ton captain's license. This is our 29 foot boat that we built here in our family shop over the last couple years. So you guys are here because you wanna learn about filling and fairing. Matter of fact, the previous episode we just posted, we're working on our sample piece of material here, which is marine plywood encapsulated in fiberglass. And in our previous episode, we went over some different options as far as different fillers, polyesters, vinyl esters, epoxies, kind of some of their pros and cons. So uh, if you haven't seen that video, check it out. But what we're gonna be doing today is getting some actual filler on this thing and showing you guys some little techniques for fairing this material out. And we went ahead, and matter of fact, you can probably see or tell from our previous video that we have come in here and we've done a good bit of sanding to prep this surface. Now, surface prep is gonna be a big deal as far as getting a high quality job. The surface needs to be clean, free of any wax, any oil, grease, debris, um, this is a, a new piece, obviously, so we're pretty fortunate. Now, depending on the area you're working in, we use a little high-speed Bosch grinder quite a bit. And uh, this bit is, this uh, disc is worn down pretty good bit, but generally like a 36 grit is what we would use if we were sanding this surface to bring it down to a good solid substrate and when i say substrate that just means basically good fiberglass material um, we also knock some of the big humps and bumps off of there now you don't have to use anything as aggressive as that big grinder you could use a little orbital sander like so that's made by dewalt and i believe that's 80 grit and that's electric or if your budget's even a little bit tighter you can go old school, that's like some 40 grit on the little 3M, and you can get in there and just hand sand this thing. Now, one thing I like to do, we always keep a shop vac around, and when you're sanding, obviously a good idea to wear a mask, but you can also hold, let's see here, I'll pan around, and I know some of you folks have seen me before, but just as a, a demonstration, if you hold the vacuum close, while you're sanding that'll capture a lot of that dust for you guys so what we're going to be doing for this demonstration is we're just going to be using just a regular old polyester lightweight body filler now you may not use this kind of filler very much or hardly ever on most boat fairing projects unless it's a very basic very entry level or very temporary you would probably want to go with vinyl ester or epoxy but these days Materials are so insanely expensive, that is gonna be your least expensive option. And for demo purposes, it will absolutely replicate the, the method you're gonna use, whether it's the more expensive materials or not. It's gonna work the same. So one of the first things you're gonna to need to get started with is a mixing board. And I went over this on our previous video. Sometimes people will use cardboard. That would be my least preferred option. Some people use plywood, that's okay, but a polymer sheet, something that won't soak the resin or material. And again, I salvage that from like an old sign and you can cut that to spec, cut it to size. And you're gonna want to jump back here and be sure before we even put any putty on that your surface is really nice and clean. We're using a little bit of acetone and a little squeeze bottle, and we're gonna do a wipe down. Now again, folks, if you're dealing with acetone, you don't wanna be in an enclosed space. We've got a big open shop here with plenty of ventilation. And compared to when we're working on a big project, this is pretty minimal exposure for us. Now, sometimes when you wipe something down with acetone, you'll get a little, kind of a little fogging on the surface. I will usually, 
follow that with a little bit of compressed air. Make sure any fumes are out of the neighborhood. And if you have any concerns that the surface may still be damp or the surface is too cold, sometimes we will use a heat gun. Obviously, you wouldn't want to be anywhere near a container of acetone. Um, this one, we're going to place that a little further. I get a lot of comments on that all the time. Acetone is highly flammable. It's about like gasoline. But this is an element in here. It's not an open flame. And we use heat guns. But if it makes you nervous, you know, you got to do what you got to do. But that will warm the surface up really nicely. So now that we've got our prep done, we've sanded this surface down to nice, clean material. We don't have any lumps or edges or anything going on. We've got a quality mixing board, and what we have is some just polyester filler. There you go. You want to be sure that it is stirred thoroughly from bottom to top. Now, this was another little trick that I showed in the previous video, but it may help you guys. Sometimes polyester resin will thin, needs to be thinned out. It gets thick if it's been sitting for some time, or sometimes you want it to be a little thinner so that it flows a little better. You can add some uncatalyzed polyester resin back to it to thin it out a bit. Now, again, this has not been activated. This is just unactivated polyester resin and we are going to stir that in and again if y'all watched the previous video i apologize for some of the redundancy that may be there i'm going to try to really move fast through that part but we have been getting a lot of new subscribers to the channel and again if you guys are new i want to welcome you folks and thank you for our viewers that have been watching the channel for a while we really really appreciate you guys and uh, if you feel so inclined if you're enjoying the channel feel free to go ahead and give us that thumbs up hit the subscribe button down below share the videos with some friends or family that might enjoy this kind of content it helps us to do more of this kind of stuff so we've stirred our body filler and we're going to be using a paste type hardener um, Sometimes it's blue, sometimes it's red, but it needs to be agitated just like the putty itself does. And usually we will kind of knead it from top to bottom, bottom to top. And I generally, as a rule of thumb, like to put one line across the material. It can vary. The hotter it is, the hotter the temperature, the less catalyst you need to put in there. The colder it is, the more you can put in there. We're gonna kinda just fold it over, cut it right back into itself. You wanna be sure to clean the blade itself. Sometimes you'll have little globs of material on the blade. You want to be sure that is turned in. You get a nice homogeneous mixture there. But once you add the catalyst, this stuff is going to start, the timer starts, and generally you got five or ten minutes or so. And we're using a little flexible blade here, guys. We've got a whole selection of them. Matter of fact, these are slightly customized we got different widths here and i've got rounded corners which will work really nice when we're laying this material and different widths if you got a big giant panel you're going to want a wider blade let's see if we can get a little material on here for you guys and we may switch over to the wider one sometimes we will use two we'll use a small one to just get it on there and then we'll use a larger one to ferret out. I had received quite a few comments on this topic. 
You guys let me know if you're enjoying what we're doing with the channel. We want to do a lot more with y'all support we, we can. There we go. So we've got a pretty good bit of material on there. That's looking pretty nice. Now i got to move pretty quickly. Now I could choose to go with that little bit wider blade. That's going to give me a little more coverage. And again, you got these nice radius corners. I'm going to start from this side. And a lot of times it takes more than one coat to get a quality job. So don't feel rushed or don't be upset if you don't get perfection. Now we got a little clump right up here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to come back in. And sometimes you have to make multiple passes to get things to lay down. And again, when we go to sanding this, I'm going to reach in there and just real carefully lay those little clumps. Now I'm not really trying to build much on this upper corner. I have found that when you have a radius or a radii, it is usually best to make one pass on one surface and then let that firm up or cure a bit. And once it's firmed up, you can come back and you can get... Now we do have a little bit of bonus material here and it's gonna start to thicken up here in a moment, I would imagine. But I hate to waste that. Now, you guys will see me sometimes, I will just take a gloved hand. Obviously, you'd want to be sure you have gloves on. And yes, two pairs of gloves works really good a lot of the times as well. So we're just going to tool that around, but I'm not worried about getting it on the base. I'm not worried about getting it perfect. We're just trying to get some material on there. We will shape it as needed. I did get a couple little clumps there. Sometimes you'll have little drags or little bumps and clumps. That happens. Don't let that don't let that mess you up because again, many times you need to come back with a second coat or if you put enough material on there in the first place, it'll sand out or sometimes you can take your blade just like that. It's gone. So we still have a little bit of material left. Again, we're working with two different blades and sometimes for these little fittings like this best tool is just your fingertip and this putty is starting to go I can feel it starting to firm up pretty soon I'm just gonna have to gonna have to stop it'll kind of turn into a little bit of a you'll still feel it start to pull you can see that's that's firming just that quick. It kind of almost turns into like a oh a cottage cheese, a thick cottage cheese. And man, it does not take long once it gets to that point. Now some putties go faster than others. Um, it seems like the vinyl esters and the pro strand that I use and the vinyl ester. Seems like you have a little longer work life with that than you do with your lightweight body fillers. Now, this body filler we're using, this is a Napa, a Pro Light, but it's pretty comparable. Evercoat makes some really, really nice uh, body fillers, lightweight body fillers. And um, the brand that a lot of people are familiar with is Bondo. Um, that is kind of one of the brands that's been around forever. Now, we don't typically use much Bondo brand. That's kind of more of an entry 
kind of an entry level material, but if that's all you have access to, or if you're just trying to practice, um, to learn, learn how to do this, rather than trying to burn up the $300 a gallon or the, even the $100 a gallon uh, Pro Strand, most of your lightweight body fillers are gonna be somewhere in that $30, $40, $50 a gallon range. And um, what we're gonna do, we're gonna give this just a couple moments. Now, I call them batches, like between, between batches, I'm gonna be cleaning up our stuff. You got your little squeeze bottle. I like the shop towels. Again, they sell those at Lowe's, but these are a good heavy duty grade towel. And you can see how those blades with the radius on them really do a nice job as far as laying that material right down in that corner. Again, folks, if you're doing this at home, rubber gloves, respirator, I get a lot of comments on that. These demonstrations are just for a small amount of time and the masks really make it difficult to communicate. I'm gonna clean our board up real well. And we should be, we should be about ready for another. That has, that has completely firmed up at this point. So for me personally, with this material, I am, I am good to go for another batch. Um, there's no reason once it has firmed up to not go ahead and put some more material on. And Practice kind of makes perfect. I know a lot of times folks This was about the size or maybe slightly smaller for this amount So that was a pretty good gauge for how much we need for this amount Sometimes I'll mix a little more than I need um, and a lot of times you can find another place to use the material You hate to waste it, but you hate to run short midway through so uh but yeah, you can see that, I can put my hand just that quick. And that's real time, fairly modest temperatures today. It's mild today, so it's not hot, it's not cold. And you guys saw that running one line across is about right in most cases. Give or take just a bit. You guys, I have been really encouraged by all the positivity I get from you guys and we've had some really cool suggestions about our next projects we may tackle. We are going to be building a hard top for our big 29 there. Uh, that is our charter boat and again if you have not seen any of the videos on that that's kind of a big part of how we started doing fiberglass repair work on the channel in the first place was documenting the build of our 29 and we got over 20 videos documenting that and we plan on doing more gel coat related work here in the near future had a lot of you folks curious about taking this raw glass though and making it look nice you know you don't you want something more than just your commercial grade finish and i get that just bear in mind it is going to add it add it adds some cost to the project for sure. So again, a lot of times what I will do, I just try to get some material everywhere. Now, honestly, and I mentioned this last night, folks, this is a fairly, fairly complex little piece. Um, anytime you have corners, ridges, angles, bends it's gonna be trickier for sure you guys saw how easy we did the material on the bottom those long runs again the clock is ticking the whole time so you've got to get this stuff 
on there and you kind of got to get it done like you mean it. To me, the fairing is like a lot of things. We do a lot more of the structural, the fiberglass and the structural side of things. But like anything in life, the more you do something, the better you're gonna get. Practice makes perfect and it's kind of funny. If I do something a lot, we're doing a lot of fairing, you kind of get better at it. You develop, it's like the muscles remember what to do and you get in a little rhythm if I haven't done any in a while, sometimes you gotta warm up a little bit, kind of what I call it. Now I'm gonna go, you guys can see now, we've got some space under here that I needed to go to a narrower blade. This wider blade that I was using would not, and you guys can see now while we didn't try to get material on both sides at the same time, I can can run the board. I can run the board. That's looking kind of nice. Kind of nice. Now again, time, the clock is running on this stuff. I've been getting some positive feedback on you guys. Y'all say, for the most part, for the most part, you're enjoying the longer videos. You like the details. Around these pipes here, that can be a little tricky. Even for a guy who does this kind of stuff. So again, don't let it mess you up. Sometimes you've got to make more than one pass. That is okay. You also kind of have to know sometimes when to just leave it, leave it alone. A light hand, sometimes cleaning some excess. Off of there is the way, the way to go. We got some little lumps and bumps there, but it feels like the material is starting to want to take off on me pretty soon. It's starting to get a little thick, but I have a little material left, so we'll go ahead and we'll roll around that end i tell you what any of you folks out there that do any baking this has got to be a lot like icing a cake or any of you guys out there that are sheet rockers used to spreading some mud I would imagine you would feel pretty comfortable doing this kind of work. And again, guys, we do this professionally. And also I run the charter boat during the summer months. Making these videos, we're trying to do these demonstrations where you guys, especially folks that are kind of new to this can really get a handle on things and I always get a lot of comments there's going to be a lot of variables there are definitely other ways to do stuff and certainly not saying that what we're doing is the only way it should be done or the very necessarily the very best I just like to show you guys how our family has done it and something that I know works. 
it's starting to firm up. You can kind of feel, you can feel it starting to drag a little bit. I'm just gonna go ahead and clean that off. And again, you kind of sometimes just need to know, and some of these little ridges and stuff, it's easier in some cases to just sand it. And just that quick, it went from a liquid to pretty, pretty firm. And while this is tacking off a little bit more, I want to show you guys. Here's an example of an, an even narrower. So you can take one big blade and you could cut down kind of a small, medium, and a larger one. And um, you can just use a piece of 80 grit, 80 grit sandpaper. And it does not take a whole lot of effort. And you can get varying diameters on the radius. Kind of depends on your job. You can, now a lot of times I will use one fairly coarse like an 80 and then we will go to like a, a 220. So you may have a job where you want one curved surface or radius in the corner and you want to keep a straight edge. A lot of times though, it seems like that straight edge will leave like a crisp line in the material. Sometimes if you're not really delicate, whereas that radius on the ends, it seems to help the material flow out a little bit better without having like a deep, a deep gouge sometimes. That can happen. Um, yeah, so that is already hard to believe how quickly that will come along. Now, there's a delicate balance here. When this stuff is cured and it gets a little bit, it'll be hard, semi-hard to the touch, but still somewhat tacky. If you let it cure for a day or two, it will get quite hard and it gets difficult to sand. But usually if you'll give it just a few moments, it will tack off to the point where it's fairly easy to sand, but it doesn't gum up your sandpaper terribly bad. And we're gonna try to catch it at that point. But while it's getting there, I wanna to talk to you guys about sanding options and how to fare and sand this. Now, obviously we do this professionally and I've got a whole bunch of power tools. Matter of fact, one of the standards for automotive, um, this is a Hutchins this is a DA or a dual action sander and it is pneumatic. So it's air powered. Got to have a compressor to run one of those and it'll take the sticky back pads, same as we're using here on this little 3M block. Now you can go to your average Lowe's or Home Depot or online here. Matter of fact, we got some links here on the video down below to buy a lot of the stuff we're using. It helps support the channel. But these little DeWalt, same deal. You can just take your standard round discs and they're interchangeable that is an electric one and they even have the little dust bags on here but you have to have the discs that are made for that this one orbits so this one goes round and round and wells as, as well as oscillates but the sanding blocks can be an inexpensive option for folks that are just getting into it and even if you don't want to spend the money on the 3m this afternoon while i was getting ready getting everything set up I just found a piece of marine plywood. It's cut to about the length of this disc and you can just kind of half fold it. And we'll see if we can. The lower portion that we did first, we are already able to sand that. And you can see there's a bit of a ridge. You can see the highs and the lows forming. And that is just with a very inexpensive wood block. And this is kind of what I'm talking about. If you catch this at the right time, you can knock some To knock some of the higher ridges off without a terrible amount of effort. Now there is a little bit of gumming in there, but you can take a compressor or a lot of times you can just take it off the block and it'll knock most of it out. 
Now again, wearing a respirator, good idea through the whole process. Matter of fact, I may put just a paper one on. I can kind of talk a little bit through. And this batch is right behind that batch. So you can see we're not doing too much at one time can be beneficial. You want to keep this in manageable, manageable amounts. And uh, matter of fact, I'll even jump over to this. This is some 40 grit, which is pretty aggressive, but we've got some pretty big ridges, pretty big ridges here. And it really takes it off of there. Don't worry about a little bit of gumming. That's not really a problem. This is actually an example of when I think hand tools, just doing this by hand, may be better in the long run. It seems like sometimes power tools. Now, again, obviously, if you've got a bigger shop or your budget allows it and you have power tools, Go for it. Yep. And my cameraman can zoom in there. That is really, look at the difference between this and that. We can make that go away quite quick. Now here's a prime example of like a custom block. Might be a good idea, this block kind of maxed out kind of maxed out right there i mean a good time to jump over to our slightly narrower block that we made out of plywood gloves do help though this kind of work can be hard on your fingers that's already we're just going to kind of come around i'm going to leave the paper extended out over the flange and that'll help us this is what i call a rough a rough cut and again folks our family's been building boats for well over five decades we've built we've built hundreds and hundreds of boats the 29 behind us is a new model we drew the plans for that boat i drew the plans and we built the molds and the tooling for it and we use these techniques when you're building boats, you want a quality job, obviously, but you don't want to waste a lot of time if it's not beneficial. If you can save yourself some work, save yourself some labor, by all means, if it doesn't compromise the quality of the job, I say go for it. All right, maybe you can zoom in there. Let's see, hopefully there's plenty of light on that. We'll try some different angles there as well. We are making a little bit of dust. We're gonna vacuum that up in a moment, but man, that's, that's looking quite nice. We're running a fairly aggressive grit paper here, guys. Like I said, I think we're running 40 or 60 40 or 60, 60 and 80 is really, really good. I really like 80 grit as a good all purpose. 80 seems to um, cut nicely, but it doesn't leave terribly deep gouges. A 
like the 40 can. But you can see we are already making a lot of headway there. Sand a little bit. Look a little bit. Sand a little bit. Look a little bit. I also, if you'll notice guys, when we're sanding, I'm doing a little bit everywhere. I'm not trying to get just one. Do not try to just get one panel perfect because if you try to get, say, the bottom panel perfect, when you come down here on the top, you're going to sand into it and you're more than likely going to damage some of the work that you did. So I will generally kind of move around and you're getting a little done in a general area and then you take the next area about to the same level i'll tell you what folks too if you want to get in shape can y'all hear me out of breath it's hard to talk and do this <laughs> it's a it's a pretty good workout doing this kind of material and again around these pipes and whatnot are gonna definitely be it's definitely gonna be trickier and uh trying to show you guys some variables again we can go back now that we're kind of out of that small stuff we can go back to the 3m block and it's okay sometimes you'll see a high spot come through you guys can see there's a little bit of fiberglass peeking through right there that is quite all right and get a nice radius on that corner And you can see a little little high spot but if this were to be gel coated when it's all said and done gel coat is quite thick and again it seems like for our friends overseas we say gel coat a lot for everything we don't typically use the term flow coat but it seems to me like flow coat is just basically gel coat that we put a wax additive in for the last coat and that produces a tack free surface um and i think what we're going to do we're just going to focus on doing one side of this little stringer for you guys tonight because that'll definitely be enough to give you the gist of what we're shooting for now that's looking that's looking pretty nice yeah that looks that looks a world better already i'm liking it you can see there we're starting to get through the material just a little bit usually when i see that i try to move on to another area that's telling you that you're getting through the filler yep see there again we can't get the big block in there now may be a good time to clear some dust now a vacuum obviously a good idea doing this guys here in the shop we have the convenience having everything up here at nice working height all right we're gonna make a couple more long passes really starting to shape up now an interesting side note showed you guys the um the uh 3m 
blocks. You guys have seen me use this little one a bunch. But when we were building, whoo, I'm out of breath. <laughs> it's hard to sand and talk. That big uh, 29 behind us, we used a long fairing board. Now this is a rigid one, but there are times when you're fairing out long areas. If you got a boat, like a big sailboat or something that's got hurricane damage and you're doing some repair on the outside of the hull, um, that is a straight one that's made by 3M as well. Now I mentioned sailboats, a lot of times they're curved and that one is a flexible one and you can put sticky discs. Now obviously they make paper for these big boards like this, but a lot of times we end up just using the discs because it's kind of universal for everything in the shop. And then this is a size, um, that's a, what's that? 05744. That is a really good one. This one's kind of an in-between your big long boards and your small ones. And what I like about this one is you can put some, you can put some muscle on it. You can really put some heat on it. And it does a super nice job. So what I think we will do, that's some 80 grit. I am pretty happy. We've got a lot of this fairing done. Matter of fact, you could use the uh, this longer one here as we get a little further along. We could put a few passes. Notice I am constantly changing, changing the angle of things. We're gonna true up that top. That's looking really nice. Well, that's, that's pretty. And the longer the block is gonna give you a truer surface. So if you're working on a really long straightaway, the longest block you can get away with is gonna be the ticket. Same for down here. We'll use this longer block. And what I like, this block will kind of, the paper will kind of fold up around the corner and still give you a pretty nice little radii there on that inside corner. So let me get some power to our little sander here. And we will get our vacuum going. Be prepared to make some, make some dust. You guys will see how a vacuum can really be your best friend though. All right. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's looking, it's looking primo. How about that? Looking really really nice and again guys we are moving right along not a lot of not a lot of dead time here now can also you guys notice this one this one vibrates and turns they do make others and these are relatively inexpensive now that's got the 40 grit That's got the 40 grit on it, which normally we don't go back to a more aggressive. But this one, all it does is vibrate. But it works really nice. working really nice as well now if you have the luxury let's see if this piece will turn 
you have the luxury of turning the material around. By all means, if you can bring a work, a piece out on a work table or shape it, put it at a comfortable height, much easier even on this for me to turn it. And here we go. Yep, see we're starting to see a few of the spots of fiberglass showing through, but but for the amount of time we've spent, that is coming along really nicely. We'll touch up this end just a touch. <laughs> that is looking pretty sweet now it is not it's not perfect yet but when you look at what the results we have now versus a little while ago um, there are a couple little sometimes you'll see a little color change there's a little bit of a low right in there um, there's a little bit of a low right in there. There's also a little bit of a low. Now this makes me realize you can a lot of times feel things you can't necessarily see. So you'll see a lot of auto body guys or marine repairmen running their hand and you can actually feel little ripples and imperfections many times that it's hard for your eye to see. We also use Quite a lot. 3M makes a really cool little product called a dry guide coat. And this, oftentimes you can put this on something and it will show, like say for example, I see a little low, a little low spot in there. Let me see if we can demonstrate that for you guys. This guide coat. All the high material will sand away. And it will show the lows. You can see right in there we got more shadowing. And right in that corner we have more shadowing. Now obviously you could continue on with that. And get it right down you can see there again we got a little bit of shadowing and it depends on how perfect you want this to look folks you could at this point stop and you could say you know what there's a little low low spot right there there's a low spot right here again you can see this discoloration or you can feel it with your hands or you could say you know what that is that is quite all right by me, and I'm happy with those results. Um, it kind of just depends. If this were out on a whole side, you'd want it nearly as perfect as possible. If it's down in a more concealed compartment, like NR29, inside the cockpit, like around the, the rod holders and some of the other areas, you don't, it doesn't have to be as perfect especially if you're going with a rolled or sprayed gel coat 
Remember that the shinier the surface is going to be, the more imperfections it will show. So, so what we're doing here, guys, again, a lot of times, glove hands. And you notice I'm just kind of coming around that little fitting. Nice and easy. I'm going to come on around. We try to sand pretty uniformly as well. You notice I'm not trying to stay in one area till it's perfect. You tend to just get the whole area up to say, let's just say on the initial rough cut, say 25%, and then you get to 50%, and then you get to 75%, and you kind of just progressively work. And then that last little bit is going to be the trickiest part. Sometimes you just got to get in there and detail inside this little piece of PVC pipe. We'll chamfer those, those sharp edges sometimes. Maybe my cameraman can zoom in here and show. Just folding that paper. And at this point, I'm using a fairly light touch with 80 grit. That looks first class. There we go. Look at that. Same deal with this bigger one here. Again, I want to thank you guys so much. We, we really want to do more of this kind of content we'd like to build the youtube channel and your suggestions and thoughts and encouragement are greatly appreciated and again feel free to subscribe and like and share and all that good stuff that tells the youtube algorithm we're doing a good job and maybe it'll get these videos out to some other folks we've really again seen a big jump in our folks from overseas and that's pretty exciting for me. I had no idea when we started this channel, we were basically just posting fishing videos to encourage or promote our charter business. But it's kind of turned into a whole nother thing and we're, we're excited about it. I can feel a little bit of a lump under there. Again, using your fingers and your hands to feel around. It's amazing what, what you can feel. Now, Many times, if you're not using a block like on these, these edges here, a lot of times we will use just a piece of paper. And you notice I'm going from one end to the other. It's nice and uniform. I see some people sometimes will get fixated on one little area. You don't want to do that. It's going to be long, nice, continuous movement if possible now true there are going to be some areas that you have to do some of that but overall if you can cover the width of a of an area like say rather than focusing right down on the corner we would try to make coverage all the way from top Top to bottom really got to be careful on corners you're putting a lot more pressure on the the paper or on the disc and you're gonna get now this is interesting I didn't even show you guys I did take a, a drywall blade if you guys are in favor more of the metallic blades you can actually do the same and if you'll notice this one has a smaller radius than the other so some jobs we're working on, it's a tighter edge. Sometimes it's a little bit longer sweep there and you can modify and that is a really cool tool. And I've got a whole bucket full of blocks of different sizes. That's even a, a, um, a soft foam block. You guys may have seen me use that in a video um, back a month or two ago. One of my buddies, he damaged his real nice Skeeter uh, inshore bay boat and we were doing some repair on the bottom and I needed something that wasn't a real hard hard corner but had a little rigidity to it and sometimes like a little foam block can work good 
for an area like underneath these little these little pipes if you want something with with a little give and a little flex flex to it. Yeah, very good. Let's jump back to this long one here. On these longer surfaces, the long board is going to be your friend. Nice and smooth. Easy peasy. Alright, that is looking, looking really, really nice. I believe we will vacuum. I want to show you guys the end result here. Now, I don't know that tonight we're going to try to take this, this piece to uh, perfection. Uh, <laughs> um, these little attachments are fantastic if you've never used them. A big shop vac. I would say if you guys are going to do some of this kind of work, man, um, and the bigger, the bigger you can get, the better. Um, that's money well spent, in my opinion, would be... The big shop back and again guys i haven't really done any fairing or body work and um gosh i'll be honest with you we got the big boat operational it was like last summer so it's probably been eight or nine months since i've done any fairing or shaping but i would say we went from that to that it didn't take too too long pretty simple tools too guys mostly hand tools mostly hand tools for us um, we may take that a little bit further obviously again guys we got a whole bunch of other videos we've been making here and if you guys want to jump back and check out some of those feel free if you guys want to drop me a comment and uh, Tell me if y'all enjoyed this. I sure do appreciate it. Um, but I think that's gonna wrap it up for this afternoon. That we took that down to about 80 grit. You could take it a little finer, but honestly, if we're going with roll gel code and trying to get a nice finish, 80 grit is a happy place. It's Captain Joe here, guys, with Island Marine Charters down in Gulf Shores, Alabama. Fish Bump TV here on YouTube. My fantastic cameraman. As always, we will catch you guys next time out.